The Morning Dump from Herd at Sports with Andrew Rogers and Damon Benning. The place for extra thoughts, extra conversation. <laughs> Here on Morning Dump, as DB just shows me. Well, when you to said that to me, I didn't think anything of it. Uh-huh. I swear to goodness, I did not think anything of it. I was like, so we'll go back. We're we'll, reaching. We'll, we'll tell them what what I. <laughs> What you just showed me and what I alluded to yesterday. So when Tony Romo was on the call yeah. on Sunday night, Patrick, it was Pacheco that broke three tacklers. For like a 10-yard game, D. and he was like he acted like, and you know, Samson Tony had just Romo split the Tony Romo stopped mid-thought <laughs> once he said there are three, and then he said, what I would hope he was about to say is like, Three Nine. of them next to each. Like, what? What was the thing that I showed you? Uh, it was three. Nah. Yeah. Well, that's what he said. <laughs> but he was it next. Yeah, he changed well, thoughts. Mid what, thing. But what? What did somebody say that they thought he was saying next to each other? Next to each other. And so that's what you hope that he was saying. But but now a on, lot on, of people on, are on, yeah are I, painting it to be. The bad form. Yeah, because when you showed me, now it's early. The bad version. It's early, and I've been paying attention to a lot of other things, so I didn't realize this was a thing. Mm-hmm. So I walk in here. You're like, yeah, hey, morning, DB. So, And then we started talking about Tony Romo. Yeah. And I'm like, did you hear? Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> wait, what? So I didn't think anything of it. But apparently, like. Well, and social media makes something a bigger deal than it actually these is. these coaches coaching, these are Power 5 coaches, that did, a, a Power 5 coach that just sent me this. And he's like, he's like, did you see this? Did you guys talk about this on the show? On Monday. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think we did, though. On Monday? Like, did we talk about it out loud? or yeah, was we it? we did. We talked about it on air. Dude, it's all a blur. To I think. Boy. I don't see. I don't think we did. I think we talked about a lot of weird – so you went into – you did the total play-by-play of the the made field goal. I don't think we did – we said anything else because you went (laughs) – is, would it be good from 44, from 48? <laughs> I did do I that. I don't know. <laughs> I did do that. Maybe it was all off air. It was all off air that we talked about. Because okay. that was like 640. I, I don't We weren't on air right. yet. Yeah. I could have sworn we brought it I there. still don't think it's that big of a deal. I don't either because he didn't say the word. And and you know what? It would be so – Even if it was an a so-called accidental slip-up because – those words don't just accidentally come out of people's mouths. And that, it that's wasn't. A, that's a word that gets thrown around more in their vocabulary in everyday life. You don't just say yeah, he ain't that Kader- word. He ain't Kadarius Tony. Correct. Yes. Oh man, that DM that I showed you today too. I feel like I'm always stumbling across because I like don't that. get into uh, because you know what's it's interesting. I'm kind of the old. Uh, let's move on. And you're part of the did you see. (laughs) So that's the blend, right? I am a guy. Because you know what's funny about that? Because you brought up Joe Staley. You're like, hey, did you see the Joe Staley stuff? I thought it was something new. But I had seen that the day it came out, and I didn't think anything of it. So the thing that I liked about Joe Staley, it it was on the heels of Shady McCoy. And so there's always this player perspective. And... Like over the last X amount of months, the the play the pro player on pro player crime on social media, I think is elevated. I don't know, man. And it's good. It's man. good for the sport too because it sparks internal competition, maybe rivalries between players and teams just because uh, of an outburst or a snarky comment that May or may not leave mm-hmm. a salty taste in another's mouth, but with them going back and forth with one another, you can look at it two different ways. Hey, they're just trash talking each other, which is good. Trash talking is good. Or there's actually some meaning behind this, and it's going to be something that sticks with both of these guys the next time they play each other. Mm. Like, it, And both are good things for the sport. Yeah. Both are great. Uh, I just, I always, you talk about your petty. 
I, I am. And it's self-proclaimed. I kind of like it, though. I live vicariously through you because I'm not supposed to be anymore, even though I think deep down if I had a choice, I would be. Petty? Uh, yeah. I just don't think I am so because. Sure. I feel like you got all your pettiness out um, yeah, in the last 10 or 15 years. Probably. Probably, right? Because now I'm like. You're mature. Now I'm like, oh, gosh, what will my kids say? You right? are absolutely mature. Me, it, not so much. So, but you think a lot of, you say a lot of the things I think. Mm-hmm. I just don't say it. Well, I just don't like getting taken advantage of. No, I in hear situations you. Because I give so much. I hear you. I hear you. And I'm always, I've been conditioned now. And part of it is me playing catch up, right? When, like, you fail at a relationship and you're embarrassed and, like, you're kind of at bottom. And I think you feel like you owe it to yourself to be the best that you can be. So even though my 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 animal instincts want to kick in and be like, ooh, step on his throat, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm fortunate to be in a position I'm in. Let me take the high road. Right. right. That's how I – And I, I am a high road guy, believe it or not. Like, you wouldn't think so, <laughs> but I am. I really am because ultimately at the end of the day, the decision that's made is not in favor of what I really want. Yeah, so I looked at that deal with Romo, and I don't even like I, – I don't think he's good at what he does. So if anybody was – no, I, I mean, that's not new. Like he's I know. Not, I, I don't think he's good at what he does. So, like, if anybody was going to be – have a chance to be critical, it would probably be me. Mm-hmm. But I don't think he meant anything by it. Like, I'm no. not going hunting. You know no. what I mean? And – it, unless this is something uh, that has I previously been yeah. done in the past, like if something comes up, like hey, in the locker room, he has said something like this before, or like you know, he he, he was caught saying this somewhere else. It's not what he was about to say. I Maybe he just I, got stumbled in thought, and it's just easy because social media is this cesspool of of information. That's why um, I'm easy. Do you think he enjoys doing what he does, Tony? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I do. Yeah. It, I think it, it, doing what he does or being with Jim. Tony or, likes doing what he does. He I likes he, to be I around think, the sport. So that should. carries a little bit of weight, doesn't it? Well, in what in what regard? There. You know, in, in in being good at what you're doing, I mean, he yeah. Is, usually, if you enjoy your job, you right. have a better chance to be good at it. So, if he didn't enjoy his job, he'd probably be really bad. He did at not it, intend you know? to say what people are making him out to say. That's at least what I'm thinking. I com- I I am in complete agreement with you. Now, there are some things that people have said before that you shouldn't say. <laughs> And uh, one person being Bobby Hull, who passed away. We said we were going to get to this on the show and and never really got into it. We're not going to go into his blemishes, per se. Mm -hmm. We aren't going to talk about his success either, because he had both. Um, But what I do want to ask you, DB, is this. Because this is something that I've been thinking about and haven't truly settled on yet. Um, And... and Give an answer. You can ask for my answer first, too. That, that's fine. But the Blackhawks were already recently in the news for mishandling the sexual assault, um, mm-hmm. the sexual assault issue. That's not accusation. That's the word I was looking for. Of Kyle Beach back in, what was it, 2010, 2011. Although it's no, it wasn't an accusation. It was proven to be. It, it was proven. Yeah. So offense. Yeah. That's, that's the better word. And names were stripped off the Stanley Cup because of it. It, it, was a, it was a huge deal. So because the Blackhawks have sort of this, this shadow following them from that point, and now with Bobby Hall surfacing again because they, they stripped him from ambassador role because of the recent, mm-hmm. like, let's, let's just say, uproar that kind of came, came with him. But all said and done, because of his success on the ice versus how he acted in everyday life, there is a statue outside of the United Center of Bobby Hole. But normally after somebody dies, they get retired, especially if someone of his caliber within that organization. A banner gets raised at the next home game. Now, I think they do have some time. I don't think they play a home game for at least another week. Mm -hmm. So they have time to make a decision. But what do they do? Do you pay honor to what he did on the ice for the organization by lifting his banner into the rafters? Or 
and, and by doing so, you're going to take a lot of heat mm -hmm. for doing it. Ver or do you just say, we, we, we have like a special message on the video board thanking him or taking a moment I, of I, silence and then move on? I think it depends on the era and it depends on um, kind of the, the rehabilitation story of said athlete. Tiger Woods, Kobe Bryant. Now Tiger Woods is Eldrick is still with us. Mm -hmm. Kobe Bryant, when he passed away unexpectedly, I felt like there was only a small minority of folks that brought up Colorado and the the civil suit and things of that nature. There was kind of this celebration of life and kind of his growth and maturation since the episode in Colorado, mm -hmm. like people focused on the how he had rehabbed his image. You know, Hole is a little different, right? Because there were people that, even though, so the backstory is, if you're not like all in on the Bobby Hole backstory, the you know uh, he was alleged to have been a serial uh, domestic abuser. Mm -hmm. I think two of his three. He assaulted a police officer. He assault when he came to break up mm -hmm. the domestic dispute. And he had a lot of repulsive life views on people. So he, he you know, he's made references to, to Adolf Hitler. And I think this was, I was just leaving Carolina. So this was like late 90s. Mm-hmm. Maybe almost 2000, so 98, 99, somewhere around there. That's he'd when made, he made all he, the claims. He had made the he'd made some comments about Hitler, uh, the black population. Now, what the the story goes is he he sued the publication. I don't know if he won or not. I don't think I don't think it ever went anywhere. But he sued the publication for being misquoted. But his sphere of influence didn't refute that those were his real views his real views mm -hmm. so he kind of yeah nothing like, came of the threatened legal action okay so we kind of live and i'm i mean it's a long time ago um but i think he did he was a pioneer in a lot of ways mm -hmm. for right? the sport oh he curbed sure. his hockey stick he was the first to do it uh he 610 had goals. goals yeah every season Bef for like five years before changing leagues mm -hmm. um he was basically the USFL, NFL of his generation, going to a competitive uh, a league that competed uh, with where he was a, a star. I think he changed – I mean, uh, shoot, he changed the fiscal game, right, uh, uh, in terms mm. of how to do contracts and, right. and getting paid for your, f for your services. So, I mean, I don't know. It's always – it's touchy. It Andrew. is. It, well, the world we live in today, it's especially touchy. Yeah, and I don't need a pound of flesh. So I'm so I can say, hey, listen, um there were people that he's close to that are mourning his loss. Mm -hmm. There are people that aren't mourning his loss. And I feel like depending on your what your relationship with the deceased is, you're entitled to that opinion. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to offend me either way. Right, right. So, um, you know, I lost two loved ones and and a two year span in the last five years. And not everybody's gonna have the same vantage point. No matter how great I think those particular people are, some may disagree from their experiences. I'm at I'm still at peace with that. So I don't believe it I don't I typically don't just get in the weeds, right? I just use that as an example because there's no way you know, everybody's going to love everybody in a time of passing, right? It's just not how human nature works. So I assume that there's those people out there. So I don't know. I don't want to make excuses for what he said outside of hockey, but in regards to the sport of hockey, I think there needs to be a separator. Mm. I think there needs to be a, hey, he was this individual outside of the sport, but here's what he was for the sport, which is why there is a statue up in front of the United Center. Mm -hmm. But him passing, that doesn't mean take down the statue because of yeah. what he did in his personal life. That's me me saying that with as as much love for 
those that he affected based I on mean, his uh, words. Yeah. But everybody says words. All, all, every, you will come across somebody in your life that has said something to you that you don't like. Yeah. But at the end of the day, do you move on from that or do you treat them like an enemy forever? More times than not, you move on because you don't want that negativity to surround your life. Yeah. And so in this case in particular, look, he may not have been the, the guy you want to go get a beer with or hang out with on the weekend, but he was definitely somebody that you cheered for when he played hockey. And here's the thing. I mean, what are the boundaries or the benchmarks? Is it the hall of good people? Is it the hall of fame for sports accomplishments? Is mm-hmm. there a line where you draw the line where right. you can't cross over in terms of being a good guy versus not? I mean, listen, Pete Rose is saying, hold my beer, right? Um, <laughs> yes, he is. Because he's always made the case that there are worse people in terms of what they represent than mm-hmm. he Which, is for what he did relative to his sport. So I un, I, I want to be sensitive mm-hmm. to that, too, because I understand it, right? But that's a standard when you get into the MLB Hall of Fame. That's yeah. something that people forgot about, and I actually took note of it. I mean, Honus Wagner, right, historically, right. not a good guy. No. <laughs> but here. But – Given the times that he grew up in, am I supposed to understand that? I would assume I'd have mm-hmm. to, right? Right. That's all he knew at the time. Um, so the Hall of Fame asked voters to decide based on a player's record, ability, integrity, sportsmanship, character, and team contributions. That's what the MLB requires from their voters. Mm-hmm. That's not all they're playing. Yeah. That's also who they were as a person. I don't know if the NHL is like that. I don't know if rules have since changed from when Bobby Hole went into the Hall of Fame. I don't know if, if it's different now, if it has everything to do with what Major League Baseball is doing too, but I at least know that. That's another reason why Scott Rowland made it is because of his character and team contributions outside Understood. of his actual playing career. Understood. So that I actually think is a standard, which I'm not shocked that Pete Rose is now saying like, hey, like you guys preach this now. Mm-hmm. What, about, what about me? I know I made one mistake. I owned it. I bet on my own team, which that shouldn't be a penalty to regardless uh, because you're betting on yourself to win, not to lose. But I bet on my own team, and this, this is where I'm at? Th- this, is, this is where you have me? No. Outside looking in? Sorry. Nowadays, though, the statue like that may come down just so, so they can avoid the negativity. Um, but there's already so much negativity that surrounds that organization. There is, and definitely. And until something bad happens, you don't think about the other things, right? Yeah, but you would think, think about it. You would think, though, that this, the negativity that comes with it would probably go away. Before, before Brett Hall, Brett Hall, before Bobby Hall died. Yeah. All of the stuff about Kyle Beach was kind of news of the past, you didn't bring it up until you start talking about Bobby Hole doing bad things, and then you're like, ooh, the Hawks actually have done bad things in the past. You forget about those things, right. and you focus on the now. So it's more of a – like, I get what you're saying about a reminder because you're seeing that reminder every single day. But when you look at the Bobby Hall statue of him playing hockey, I don't personally think of what he did right. in his life post-hockey or even during hockey with – as DB brought up, the domestic abuse cases, the assaulting a police officer. I never thought about that. I knew about those things. I didn't have to say, like, I believe in those things. In the same vein, when I hear Chicago Blackhawks, I don't think Beach. That's what I'm saying. You right? just don't so, think that stuff. In the same vein, I, it doesn't. But you think about it when everything becomes relevant again. And you're like, hey, here's everything. Have you seen the statue? I have not. Have you? I have not. I was just wondering. It, it, I mean, I've was, seen it on. You talking about like in person? Yeah, I was wondering how prominent it was. How, you know, where where it was in relativity to going into the the United Center. My man said theory of relativity, relative to where it was. Yeah, it's just on the outside. I don't so. know if it's by a gate. It's probably with a bunch of other statues. Yeah, retired Blackhawks. Hmm. Um, but it's him. He, this is what it looks like. I mean, I don't no, know if I've you can really it. see I've, it, Shaner. It's I've, just I've, him, I've, him doing a slap shot. I've seen it. So, and he was an icon in the sport. No, I mean, no, no question No to question that. about it. But he just, like I said, he's not a guy that I would say, hey, let's go get a beer. Yeah. 
hey, how about a beer? <laughs> hey, let's go hang out. <laughs> um, also, though, before we wrap this thing up, how about that Horvat trade to the Islanders? A team that is not even in playoff contention right now. I know it. And is trading for a rental. Like, that's so surprising to me. I know that they probably are like, hey, you know, we still have a lot of time. We can get and to the And I playoffs. think they're waiting to get healthy, too. So but we'll see how that fits. Can you imagine not making the playoffs and making that trade and then not signing Horvat or getting Horvat to sign after this season? Tickets. I mean, and yeah, the immediacy I, you, thereof. You can get money, but you traded a first-round pick plus some for this guy, and I, he's a great player. I think they think. But a rental? They think they could make a run. Why not, right? Who wouldn't think like and that? And it is the NHL where you get uh, where you get half the guys that have a chance to – Shane, it's cold out there. Can you, like, let Jacob in through those doors real quick? Um, I, I think in hockey where half the teams make the playoffs, you, you, give, that, you give that a chance. Right. You, you, well, and, and I get that, but they're still behind the Sabres. Yeah. And that's what's crazy to me is that – you don't normally see a team trade for a guy if you aren't already in playoff contention because, like, you know that, hey, we're going to keep getting better and better and, and we're going to have a better seed because of that come playoff time. This team is two spots out of the playoffs right yeah, now. Yeah, but that's not a ton, man, especially in a, in a, in a crowded – uh, and, and, and a crowded race where you're looking at with 56 points. How many NHL games are played? 80-something? 80 82. 81. 81 games. Yeah. So they have less than 30 games left, and it's not like they have to make up a ton of ground. You only have to make up four points. I mean, you're there. You're right there. You're right there. Right, because if you're, not, because right. the, the Rangers have 62 and, and points. I, and I'm with you. It's, it's about getting into the playoffs yeah. then for this team. Yeah. But when you I think, think, of, they a, think, they can when make you a, think of a rental player, you normally think of a rental going to a team like right now, the Bruins. Who well, are like, hey, let's add Horvat right now. And you know what? This is going to make us the most dangerous team in the NHL. That's I mean, what I think when you trade for a rental. It's odd to see the Islanders. It's not uncommon but it's odd. Well, I mean, maybe they're thinking a healthy Matthias Samuelson when he comes back. Horvath. Like, I think they think that there'll be brighter days. The Islanders are a good team. They just don't score enough. And so I get why they added Bo, because Bo scores a ton. Yeah. And so they could probably win more games with him. Not that the deal doesn't make sense for the Islanders. It's just weird, as I sit here today, to see a team I don't trade. even know why I had Buffalo on the brain, but. Well, because they're one spot ahead yeah. of the Islanders. Islanders. Uh, but who are two spots behind my Penguins. Mm -hmm. Correct. <laughs> who are still, yeah, a, for some right. reason, on the outside looking in. Like, you see a team like the Capitals, let's say the Rangers, or uh, up top you see the Sabres or the Maple Leafs or whoever trade for Bo Horvat. You just don't normally see the Islanders who are bottom three in the Metro. So it, it's cool. It's cool because we can talk about this and be like, wow, what do the Islanders have up their sleeve? Because they have to have something. They have to know that by adding him, they're like, hey, you, we need more goals. Bo, you score a lot. Just, Come on it's over. It's just funny how hockey works because four years ago I was calling them the Pens killer. Like I, th that was the one team, you know, they'd play at NAS. And I'm just like, it's just a team, just the way they skate, open eye, speed. Like I just didn't want Pittsburgh to have to deal with the Islanders, and now here we are. I'll tell you what, though. Think about Bo with the year he was having, his last year oh, I, with Vancouver. I, I, I fully understand what they could be thinking. Well, and Vancouver's like, hey, I'm gonna, we're going to offload you while you're hot right now because you aren't signing with us again. Oh. You're going to go to a different team. So you trade him. Great for the Canucks. Also kind of cool for the Islanders. Here's their line. Josh Bailey, Bo Horvat, Matthew Barzal. That's line one. Josh Bailey's a stud. People yes. sleep on him. Brock Nelson moves to line two with Anders Lee and Kyle Palmieri. And uh, then it's Gabriel Pajau, Holmstrom, and Parise. I mean, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty solid team when you add Horvat into the mix. And you have all of a sudden, you become deeper because you move down a line. Mm -hmm. So unlike the Blues, who don't go much deeper than those first two lines. They don't go deeper than really that first line. <laughs> Let's be real. You now have three formidable lines, potentially. When healthy. Yeah, before we wrap this thing up, let's just look at the Blues line one more time just so that we can rub it in. I mean, if you have Noel, Achari, 
as your second line center, there's a problem. <laughs> There's a problem. Uh, it's Brandon Saad, Braden Shen, and Jordan Kairou with Buchnevich out. Ivan Barbashev, Achari, and Tarasenko, who will probably get traded. I'm just trying to get out of the wild card, right? The the Penguins and the Capitals. Who's taking all. him? Who's taking Tarasenko? <sighs> there are a lot of teams that need a true scorer, and that's him. But, man, does he come with a little bit of baggage. Yeah, and you better have your clubhouse in order. Mm-hmm. Because that's a guy that comes with apparently he's – can be perceived as fairly high maintenance. Um, One thousand percent, because when he didn't get the C on his chest, oh, all hell broke loose in that organization. Yeah. If you want to talk more sports with us, head back and check out the podcast from today's show, Coffee and Cream. That's uh, you type in Hail Varsity Radio wherever you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, and then you can find the full show there. If you like Morning Dump, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and. Uh, stick around with us because we do this after every single show. You can find Morning Dump on Apple, Spotify as well. He's at Damon Benning on Twitter. I'm at Andrew Rogers TV. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.